So I was in my local dollar store, well, the Dollarama up here, and I saw this bucket, a little planter bucket. I thought, well, that's an interesting shape, a lightweight, kind of conical. Hmm, that might be interesting. And then, and then I noticed there's a slightly smaller one. And I wondered, hang on a minute, would that large one fit in there? And it did. I thought, whoa, oh, okay, now we're kind of conical. And I thought, well, wait a minute, here's, here's another one, slightly smaller than that one. How would that work? So I put that in there and I thought, okay, now we're, now we're getting kind of conical. But wait a minute, there's even a, a smaller one. And I thought, wow, I kind of got a little cyclone going here. And then I found another little pot, not quite the same shape, but it does get smaller and, and fits in there. And I thought, wow, for $12.75, could I make this a cyclone for my dust collection system? So I brought it home, I'm gonna give it a try. So I've spent a fair bit of time trying to figure out how I'm going to explain making a dust collector a cyclonic cone out of all of this. Uh, and I think it's just better to I'll put the camera on and you can watch me go at it. Fundamentally the wood bits and that little green thing are going to be used to make a hat and all these little pots are going to be the cone part. So I'll get on with it.
All right, with the major pieces cut, <coughs> I have a bottom and I have a top for the hat. These represent the sides that'll hold the top and bottom together, kind of like so. The intent is to have a piece of pipe, you know, represented by this, that'll get inserted into that into the hat like that. If I'm fortunate, I'll be able to cut it into kind of an interesting shape like this. And that will, <clears throat> then we'll have a, a large hole in the bottom of this piece that uh, the top of the cone will fit into. And that little green mat is going to be used to create um, kind of the circle in the hat to guide all the uh, wood chips and, and dust down into the cone. So I'm going to um, mark out the hole uh, for the top of the cone, and then I'll mark out the hole for the pipe that's going to be used to feed into the uh, blower unit. Uh, and then we'll cut these sides to length and think about assembling it. So I sanded the black paint off the top of that piece that's on the table now. Uh, it was a salvaged uh, door from a cabinet, uh, and you may have noticed it had a pretty fancy design on it, but it just made it very difficult to see any of the markings that I wanted to put on it. So what I'm going to be doing is drawing, uh, finding the center so that I can position the hole. That's where the pipe will go through, and on the bottom piece, yeah, the hole that I'm going to cut there will be cut through a hole saw that I have ordered off Amazon. That won't arrive for a couple days. But for the bottom piece, I'm going to mark that, um, and that will have the larger hole. Just going corner to corner will let me find the center pretty easily. The piece is not square. Uh, it's 16 inches long by 13 and 3 quarter inches uh, wide. So I'm offset, I'm putting that hole um, on a 13 and a quarter, 13 and 3 quarter by 13 and 3 quarter inch square. That'll leave a couple inches at one end useful for connecting the pipe uh, that comes uh, in to feed the cyclone. So now I'm just marking the hole for the um, top of the hat. Again, marking out that 13 and 3 quarter by 13 and 3 quarter inch square. Uh, and I drew a line down, just make it visible, clearly visible of where the center of this uh, is going to be. And then just marking an X on the top of the piece that will identify the location of the hole that's going to be cut. Just making sure that I draw a small circle on that piece. I'm going to draw a large circle on the bottom piece, just so that I don't get confused later on about which piece is which. So I'm using a little beam compass here, basically a stick with a couple holes in it, uh, to mark that 12-inch hole on the uh, bottom of the hat. This is going to be the uh, hole that will uh, feed all the chips into the cone. So this little beam compass works really well. I'm, simple technique, but 
Yeah, really makes things uh, easy to see. Good visualization tool. So you can see on there, there's the 12 inch hole and you can see that it's offset a little bit to one side to allow for the shoot. I originally thought I would drill a hole and then use the jigsaw uh, to cut that hole in there, but I changed my mind and I'm going to use the router table for that. Okay, change of plan. Rather than cut this hole out with uh, my jigsaw, I'm going to use the router table. Uh, so I've got a quarter inch bit here. I'm just going to drill uh, a hole through here on the uh, drill press to make sure it's a perfectly vertical hole. Uh, and then we'll drill a hole here in the uh, router table exactly six inches from away from the far side of the router bit. And we'll see what happens. What could possibly go wrong? All right, I moved you over a little closer to get a first-hand look at what's going on. So <clears throat> I have a pin. Got a pin coming through the piece. That goes through that hole, which is exactly six inches away from the far side of the router bit. Um, I have the router bit sticking out just about uh, probably a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to start the rotor up, lay this down on the uh, on the bit, and then start uh, going around. Um, and I will be going this way. You thinking about this right? Yeah, I'll be going this way. Let me think about that. No, the bit's going to spin up. So I'm, I'm going to go this way uh, to make sure I get a, a climb cut and it'll be a cleaner cut on the inside edge. That's the theory. So we'll uh, let's see what happens. Uh, after I make that first pass, I'll adjust the saw, uh, adjust the router, bring it up a little bit higher, and we'll do that again. Bring the router bit up a bit. We'll do this some again. That should let us come right through the piece. We're close, uh, I need to come up just a little bit more. Uh, that's enough that it'll tear beautifully, so I'm gonna raise it up a little bit more so we get a cut. All right, try that again.
here we are. That makes a nice clean cut, nice, perfectly round, I like it. I hate MDF though. Oh man, this is dirty stuff. off the tether and now you can see how that uh, how the hat is gonna sit so the bottom of the hat will sit like so and that leads very nicely into our cyclone so I'm going to I'm not going to cut the top part yet but I will put on the sides on this um, and uh, at least loosely because I want to now work with our little bit of green plastic to make the inside guide here. As the air comes in here, I don't want it to be bouncing around in a square chamber, so that green plastic will go all around here to make a nice guide for the air to flow. So I got uh, three sides put on with, the, with my little nail gun from Ryobi. Uh, so I'm putting this top piece on. This, <clears throat> this piece in particular, actually I shouldn't call it the top, this is going to be the, what I'll call the front. So there will be a hole drilled in here uh, to accommodate the uh, intake pipe. But I'm just going to put this in place now just to, um, because I want to start fiddling around with the uh, plastic swirler. Let's call it that for now. tool experts tell me what's going on. Try a different battery. 
put that back in charge. Thought that had just come off charge, so it looks like it may be. Uh, oh, there it is. It's charging. there's the box, the top of the hat rather. These pieces um, that I saved, I'm thinking <clears throat> I may want to put them in here just to help direct the airflow as it comes into the hat uh, rather than, uh, you know, just, I, I don't know, let's see what happens. With the swirly bit, it may not be an issue. Here's the swirly bit of plastic. This is, this is, in Canada, we call this a snow sled or a snow carpet. Not a sled, but a snow carpet or a magic carpet or all kinds of things. Really shiny surface here. So you put that down on the snow, you grab these handles, sit on the thing and go ripping down the hill, in the, on the snow hill. Um, it has a really nice shiny surface here, which I thought would be wonderful for directing the dust. In fact, I initially thought about perhaps making the entire dust collector uh, cone out of this specifically. You know, I could twist it around and into, a, into a cone shape like that. But I don't think it would be quite tall enough. having second thoughts but I'm gonna go with uh, the approach that I've got for now so the intent here is I want to get this strip <coughs> cut uh, I'll, sorry I'm gonna cut a strip off that that is the height of this box See, you know, I want it to come down past this edge uh, so that it actually sits inside that first bucket that is the top of the cone. Well, it'll go about an inch wider than this. So I'll take that off here. So let me set up to do that now. Okay, I'm gonna cut a strip eight inches, uh, eight inches wide from here to here, get the whole length. Now if I mess this up, I got another half I can play with. exactly the right size. I'm going to bring the camera over here so you can get a rough feel for how this is going to fit. So with the inlet being over here, <coughs> the hole here, we'll have the air coming in through that pipe and I'll want the air to be swirling around here and then dropping into the bucket. So that means that this piece will probably be cut off about here. Oops, probably be cut off about here, uh, depending on the, the pipe width. And it may be uh, one of those little pieces that I had saved. Uh, 
uh, could go in here just to provide that access for the pipe. So the pipe will come straight in through that little hole. I'm not sure about that yet. There's you know, lots to be determined. Um, but it might give uh, an opportunity to mount this, the end of this piece onto something a little more solid. I don't want to have it just flopping around. So that's the uh, thought du jour. I'll keep uh, poking away at it. One of the things that um, I can do almost immediately, though, is <clears throat> where this piece comes around. Sorry. So as this comes into the cyclone, at about that point there where the here where it crosses I, that's where I want to go down about an inch and a bit um, so that represents the point where it's dropping into the bucket so I'm going to play around with that a little bit and um, yeah just continue on doing what I'm doing. I'll come back when I have something a little more concrete here. All right, so here's the uh, general idea. I've got the box kind of held together with some green painter's glue. And uh, this, of course, will, will get cut off, um, but that's kind of dependent on the size of the pipe. So I'm gonna wait until I get the, the uh, pipe, actually, before I make any more cuts. Uh, so air will come in through the hole that'll be cut here, up the pipe, swirl around, and then drop into the bucket. Uh, just doing some quick measurements here and determination. The bucket actually has quite the taper on it. Uh, and of course, coming out here, this is coming out straight. So I don't think I'm going to have much opportunity to bring this out very deep. In fact, I'll probably cut this off just slightly over the edge of the bottom of the of the hat here there's not going to be much overlap but i'll just have it come down just enough probably just to touch the top of the plastic on this rim this bucket uh, I, I expect to be uh, running screws up through the bottom here into the bottom of the hat to hold the bucket in place so that's where we are now. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to go out and pick up some pipe. And uh, we'll carry on to the next step. So thanks for watching.